To provide insights now into what we learned from dancers, we're going to hear from Sue Mays. Sue's skill and dedication as the principal physiotherapist for the Australia Ballet keeps dancers dancing across our stages and, for the moment, our screens. But before I hand it over to Sue, uh, we thought it would be good to give you a little idea just how extreme the demands are on ballet dancers to, 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 to communicate that beauty. There's so much going on. So here's some footage from the Australian ballet, including Amber. So after you've seen that vote, that uh, ballet on the video, I'd like you to answer this poll question. So the question is, do you think being a ballet dancer would put your joints at greater risk of damage? So either answer yes or no to that. So while we're waiting for the answer to your poll questions, I'd just like to say that Amber didn't tell you the whole story that I think I'm really amazed at what she can do. She's actually got a little toddler and uh, she still manages, her and her husband, who is also a principal dancer, Ty, managed to fit all their conditioning and their busy professional ballet life in amongst looking after a toddler as well. So it's really incredible and I really thank Amber for her amazing story that she's been happy to share tonight. So the, the real priority for us at the Australian Ballet is to make sure our dancers have healthy and um, hips, not only during their career, but also after when they retire. And when we partnered with La Trobe University, an absolute priority for us was to research the hip health in our professional ballet dancers. Now, most would assume, especially after seeing the video that you saw, that that loading that they do through their hips is really quite damaging. They take their hips through extreme ranges of movement. They do a lot of jumping. The men do heavy lifting in the partnering that they do. They also, we know that the hips get impinged, so there's an impingement or abutment of the joint that can potentially lead to damage. There's some subluxation, which is an excessive movement through the joint. And also we know that the dancers, like other athletic, aesthetic athletes, love to sit in sort of side splits in these extreme positions for long periods of time. Now, all these levels of extreme loading on the hip joint really could lead to injury and potentially osteoarthritis. So are dancers at risk of osteoarthritis? We used magnetic resonance imaging to evaluate the pathology or the findings around the hip joint. And we we're amazed that at least 50% of our dancers had even just one of these features. So we found so much of these findings in the hip joints. Nearly all of our dancers had at least one of these features that are usually associated with osteoarthritis in their hip joint. So if we looked at their imaging alone, we would really assume that dancers are bound to get arthritic hips when they get older. However, we did notice that the prevalence of these features increased as they get older, and we also compared this to athletes. And we found there was actually no difference in the prevalence of these features in the dancers and athletes. So as Jill was saying, these features are often found in people without any pain, and our findings certainly supported that, uh, those other, the other research that's been done. So we found that there was no relationship between the imaging findings on the MRI and the dancers or the athletes' hip pain. We did find one feature that was associated, and a fusion synovitis, which is the swelling around a joint, was certainly related to the dancers' pain. And this is, some, this is something that can be very adequately managed with modifying their workload, perhaps some anti-inflammatories, and also strengthening the joint so that it's not excessively moving so much. But uh, then we, was really, we really wanted to see the impact of the professional ballet dancing on the hip, the hip joints. And so we followed the dancers over five years. And at the end of the five years, we re-MRI'd their hips. 
and we found that the dancer's hips did not change over the time. So the cartilage remains stable and that it's the cartilage that can often deteriorate with arthritis. In fact, we've had no hip injuries that have caused a dancer to miss a performance or training for eight years. We've, in the last 15 years, we've not had to do any hip surgery and a dancer hasn't retired due to hip pain. So I think if you look at all this evidence, it really supports the idea that ballet dancing is not bad for your hips and hips can really cope with its extreme loading. So why is it that this, uh, the ballet dancers can cope with this loading? Perhaps they've got strong muscles, ideal anatomy, and ballet targets the hip joints at, from such a young age. So we also, as a team, looked at the size of the muscles around the hips of dancers and athletes, and we found that dancers had strong hip muscles, and so that's probably pretty protective. And this iliopsoas, which is the muscle at the front of the hip, which is an important hip stabiliser, so it helps protect the hip, but it's also a really important muscle for holding that leg up that they do to the extreme heights. We found that this muscle was actually smaller in um, people with hip pain. So it seems like a really important muscle to target. We also found that when we measured the bony anatomy of the dancers, that they actually had a really unique shape that might be ideal for ballet. So they had these nice spherical femoral heads with narrow necks, and then they had this um, angulation of their femur that uh, meant that it probably allows a lot more movement than the gen you know, general pop population can do. They also had cups or acetabulum that face more out to the side, which can allow that external rotation or that turnout movement that they do um, throughout their ballet technique. So all these features are probably pretty protective and allow them to do these movements without getting damaged. And ballet itself has really specific loading that I think actually could be quite protective for a dancer. So the great thing is they load their hip joints very specifically from a young age right through their career. And this loading is very gradually increased in its volume and in its complexity, which is a really sensible thing to do to the joint to build up some tolerance to the extreme loading that they do. They also use their hip joints through full range of movement, which is a healthy thing to do. They do a lot of jumping and from a very young age they do small jumping and it gradually builds up its complexity and height as they get older as well. And they do lots of balancing on one leg and we know balance training is great for joints. And they develop such precise control and they can control the end of movement. But I think most importantly ballet is a non-contact activity. And unlike football, for example, there's no, there's very rarely do we see traumatic injuries. And it's those traumatic injuries that can lead on to damage injury. So at the Australian Ballet, we've been really successful in managing and preventing hip injury. And a key to that is the strengthening those muscles around the hip. The dancers, when they're employed, all get a hip program. They do it before their training in the morning. Then they do some high resistance training after their, um, at the end of their day. But we also don't let them rest completely. Generally, we can modify their workload and they'll um, be able to keep jumping. Often the jumping, the small jumping, is really fine for the hips. We might not get them to do what Arco's doing here, but um, we'll certainly um, get them to do some jumping that keeps all those muscles going strong. We'll give them some education on safe stretching so that they're not pushing their hips into those extreme ranges and we'll also make sure that they keep up their exercises when they retire. But I hear there's some poll results coming through. Oh, so here we go. 59 for yes. 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 And 41 no. That's right. 59 yes. So you, most of you or more than half thought that perhaps ballet dancing could injure a joint. So I think what we're saying actually the dancers can cope, but we'll get to that. So what are we doing now with our ballet research? We're evaluating, we're using motion capture to evaluate the um, hip motion during ballet class. We're also trying to work out if, we, if the hip pain that they might be feeling is affecting their technique or their performance. And we're also really still trying to work out what muscles are the most important ones to target. And now we've also gone on to study the hip, the joints health around the foot and ankle. So what can we all learn from these um, ballet hips? What we can learn is that hip joints really can tolerate extreme loading. However, they need to have the nice strong muscles to be able to do what they do. 
and they need to respect the bony anatomy. Not all of us have got this ideal bony shape and if we don't have the bony shape, perhaps we shouldn't be pushing the hips to those extreme positions. And pain is not related often to the structural change in the joint. And finally, we need to avoid complete rest. So we keep them moving at a, you know, they might have mild pain, but we actually keep all those pain-free activities in there. And I'm just going to finish off with this last slide, and I really love this because this is Val, who is our latest um, ambassador for the partnership. And she's just about to go into the photo shoot, and you might recognise her from some of those photos that uh, came at the start of my talk. And she's doing some exercises before she does those extreme motions in her photo shoot. So she's doing a little exercise that strengthens up. It's a bridging exercise that strengthens up the muscles at the back of her hip. And this is her pre um, prevention. So she's being really proactive, doing some nice prevention exercises before she puts her body through such extreme movements. And thank you. Thank you very much, Sue Mays. Uh, it's interesting to me to sit here and see the other people in the room nodding their heads along with the things that you're saying. Um, I think we're dispelling a lot of misconceptions and some of the questions that are coming in online right now uh, are getting to, 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 uh, to dig in a little bit more about these misconceptions. So looking forward to the question and answer session. We've got one more speaker before that happens, but keep your questions coming in through the portal in the bottom.